Apex. Boom. There we go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, Hackman. Fucking beautiful lap by him. Over on the left. Kits in the apex. Bang, bang. Beautifully taken out. Here we go. Here's the important part of the track. Okay? Very, very important. This is where you need to keep, keep up the momentum, the speed. Here we go. Peter. Wow. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in. We're back. <laughs> Two week break from Formula One. How's everybody doing? I hope we're all excited for the Hungary Grand Prix. Lot to talk about today. A lot to talk about today. Ricardo coming back to Formula One. I don't think it's going to be a happy one, but we're going to talk about that in more detail later. Um, yeah, guys, it was it was very very cool, very fun, very interesting, exciting Silverstone Grand Prix, wasn't it? A few weeks ago. Holy shit. McLaren, out of nowhere. What the hell was that? I mean, seriously, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Nobody saw that one coming. Now, the question is, the real question is, does he have it? Do they, ha do they have enough, McLaren, to get to the finish line? End of the day, it was an incredible update on the car. Do not get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. It was what a leaps and bounds ahead of the other teams. Unbelievable. However, we can't get too carried away here because it was a high-speed track Silverstone. Very high speed. Okay, I mean, they're going through some of those corners at 100, 170, 180, 185 miles an hour. So, yes, we do know this. Their car is awesome at the moment for high-speed tracks, but not every track is high-speed. They're going to Hungary now next, which we're going to get into that in a few minutes, but Hungary, it's a, it, even the drivers say it, it's like a karting track. It's stop-start. It's I mean, it's very, very uh, high, uh, high downforce package that you're going to need for this, for this track. So this is going to be the real test for McLaren, I honestly think. Now, then again, you see, you've got other factors to consider. You've got, will the other teams bring another upgrade for them for themselves? Now, McLaren, we now know they're good at high-speed tracks. Up to now. Here's the question. Do they have the overall balance? Because it's one thing to be quick at high-speed tracks, guys. But then what if they go to a slow-speed track? Now, I mean, look at Alonso and Aston Martin, right? I mean, I'm rooting for, Ast for Alonso this year, but... Uh, Alonso's been really good. At, he was good at Monaco. Great balance in the car. He was right up there. He was nowhere in Silverstone. Nowhere. I mean, he finished seventh in Silverstone. That was a disaster for them. You know, and, I, and I'm rooting for them. I really am. So here's the problem is that Alonso and Aston Martin, they've got a great balance in the car. But the problem is they just don't have it when it comes to the high speed tracks. But overall, it's a good balance because if they do go to mid-speed tracks, they still have a good balance. So that they've ticked the box for slow and med medium, med excuse me, medium speed tracks, but not high speed. So here's the thing. Can McLaren actually get her, get her over the line this one now? So it, this, see, this is the fun thing about Formula One, right? It's the great thing. It's, it's fun because we don't know what's going to happen next. We just don't. Now, Hungary, it's going to be a very interesting race, I think. It's going to sh it's going to mix things up again. I honestly I don't know if McLaren have the up uh, the package, the updates for Hungary. If I had to put money on it, I don't think they do. Now, believe me guys, I'm a McLaren fan. I'm a big McLaren fan. I mean, Senna used to drive for them, Hakkinen. Prost. I mean, so many fucking titans of the sport race for McLaren. I'm a massive, especially when Ron Dennis was there. I thought Ron Dennis was unbelievable. And guys, if you know, I know there's a lot of people that are still new to Formula One. So if you've actually never heard of Ron Dennis, or you might have heard of him, but if you don't know much about him, you should check him out on YouTube. You know, there's quite a there's quite a good couple of videos about Ron Dennis and um, how he progressed up to the top with McLaren. You know, he was a very smart guy, very just on the ball. He's a great passion for racing, which is always lovely to see. And to be honest, most team owners, they do have a passion for racing, you know? I'll give them that. But uh, you should def definitely check out Ron Dennis. R-O-N-D-E-N-N-I-S, I think that's how you spell it. With two N's, I think. In fact, did I? Let's just double check that, actually. I know it's kind of uh, pointless, but let's see there now, actually. Ron Dennis. Yeah, it's two N's. That's the one. 
I don't know why that actually bothered me. I needed to check that. Anyway, so yeah, guys, that's McLaren. Let's see what happens. So before we get into Hungary, we're gonna do a bit of a, we're gonna change things up a little bit today, guys. We're gonna we're gonna make some fun to this. We're gonna do an onboard lap of Mika Hakkinen going around uh, Hungara Ring um, for this weekend, and we're gonna we're gonna show you the racing line. Um, we're gonna show you so, guys. This is gonna be very exciting today, right? Very exciting. So, if you have ever been karting, or if you've never been, I'm gonna show you how the racing line works. Okay, so if you're racing against your buddies, you'll have something to, to go with, okay? Because this will definitely help you if you're karting, because the racing line is the exact same in karting, Formula Ford, Formula 3, 2, all the way up to Formula 1. All right, it's slow, technically the, the racing line is slow into a corner, fast out. Now, that doesn't apply for every single corner, but that's the golden rule. Slow in, fast out, and you catapult down the next straight. So this will definitely help for your karting too, but we're gonna go through that now in, in a little while. So if you're watching me on YouTube, we're gonna see it, okay? Um, if anybody watching on audio file, apologies, but I'll talk through it too anyway. But if you wanna go over to YouTube, definitely should just check out the racing line, okay? Um, okay, <coughs> I'm sorry guys, excuse me. So, let's just do a quick review of the British Grand Prix. So, I mean, it was definitely a dominant performance by Red Bull and Verstappen. They kicked ass. Um, yeah, the result at the end of the day, it was only 3.7 seconds that Verstappen won over Norris, but <laughs> they, they took the shoe off the gas. They didn't need to, to push that hard. So, I mean, you know, the, the, believe me, Red Bull have plenty in the bag here, um, for, especially when it comes to Verstappen. Uh, so Verstappen take, takes the win, Norris was in second, Hamilton in third, so it was, I mean in fairness it was nice for the, for the, uh, the British public to, to have, to have people, uh, or people, to have their, their two boys finish on the podium. Um, obviously the British would have preferred if one of the boys won, but look, hey, Red Bull and Verstappen are so dominant at the moment, unbelievable. Piastri finished fourth in Mercedes, which was a good result, very good result, Russell and Mercedes in fifth. Perez in sixth, and we're going to talk about Perez as well in a little while. He's uh, he's definitely struggling. Um, Alonso in seventh, and Albon in eighth. Now, it's eighth position. Now, it's good for Williams. Now, Williams are very like McLaren. They they are just an established. They're an iconic Formula One team. Frank Williams back in the day. Unfortunately, the man's not with us anymore. Um, but he was amazing. He was like a Ron Dennis. They were just fucking animal of a man. Everything was about winning, and nothing else mattered. Now, would Frank Williams be happy with an eighth? Hell no. However, they finished an eighth. They were at the back. We have to remember, guys. Right? They were at like <laughs> fucking. They could be coming twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth if they were lucky. So, eighth position is progress. So for them. I'd be satisfied. Wouldn't be fucking jumping up and down for joy here, but I'd be happy that okay, guys, we're on the right track here. We've got made some we've made some steps forward here. We're on the move, which is good. So I think they'll be I think they'll be satisfied. You know? And hey, they beat the two Ferraris. Ferraris, I mean, what the hell happened Ferrari? Ninth and 10th. Jesus, man. I mean, I Oh man, they've they've really got to do something here, man. They've got to make some moves. They've got to make some updates. I mean, everything's just falling to pieces with Ferrari at the moment, isn't it? It's crazy shit, man. But anyway, come here. Let's move it on here. Let's go to look at the championship points. So I mean, Verstappen, 255 points. Perez, 156. So he's got 99 points clear. That's almost four race wins, guys. Per Verstappen. I've said this a few rounds ago. I mean, Verstappen can literally sit at home for the next four races. Okay? Four races. He could go on the complete and utter piss, drink every weekend, wake up, not even watch the Formula One, don't, doesn't even know because he's so comatose drunk or hungover, and he'd be one point behind the championship if Perez won all four. <laughs> Now, okay, if Perez got fastest lap, right, he wouldn't be, he'd be maybe five points behind. But, I mean, that's one hell of a lead, guys, and we're we're just at halfway point of the season. Now, look, anything can happen here. 
anything can happen this year you just never know what could fucking happen in racing because believe you me unpredictable stuff happens all the time it's looking good for verstappen it's looking extremely good now obviously verstappen's not gonna be sitting at home <laughs> of course not but wow man it, it's it's looking good and you got alonso in one in third position 137 points hamilton 121 carla science 83 points so yeah i mean these these guys have got a mountain to climb so let's look at the constructors constructors championship i mean this tells you how dominant red bull i think at the moment are okay and this is where we're going to talk about sergio perez red bull they're only halfway through the year and they're on 411 points mercedes are in second and they have 203 points Ladies and gentlemen, that is, what, 208 points ahead at halfway through? If you told me that Silverstone was the last round of the year and Red Bull won the Constructors' Championship and they won it by 208 points, I would be saying to you, holy shit, that is a dominant year. Like, hugely dominant. We're not even at the end of the year. And they're half. we're halfway through and they're double the points ahead more than double that is guys it's, it's phenomenal and Perez has had some nightmare weekends now I brought up a few week, rounds ago probably about three or four rounds ago that I know it okay no one's going to convince me otherwise I fucking know exactly what's going on here Red Bull are slowing Perez down Verstappen is their golden boy ladies and gentlemen okay Trust me, a driver... Now, I don't rate Perez this big, okay? I don't think I would... I wouldn't be rating, like, oh, he's brilliant, he's this... No, I think he's a good, solid driver, all right? But I can tell you this, and I'm batting for him, and I'm not even a fan of Perez. I'm, as I think most of you know here, I'm very fair on my, my opinion on this whole stuff, all right? I'm trying to be very fair to everybody. And I think Perez, he's had a couple of wins, he's done podiums, this and that. And all of a sudden, he just doesn't show up for the next round? Are you joking me? And Red Bull have the best car. And are you telling me Adrian Newey has, has had such great success with Verstappen and the car is so good that they can't get the other car up to par with the same that one? Are you joking me? That's total crap, guys. Now, now you're going to probably say, oh, well, it's because Perez is making mistakes. Yes. Now, Perez has made a few mistakes. 100%. Like Monaco. Crash into the tire wall. Human error. Make, he, they make mistakes. Silverstone. Both him and the team. I think... Mm, again, Perez is sitting in the car, so he can't tell exactly where cars are positioned on the track exactly. So I think, in a way, Red Bull, the team, just made a slight error. You know, nothing major. Just these things happen. They made an error with him, putting him at the track, wrong position, and he got screwed. Or maybe, no, maybe that one was on purpose. Maybe. But again, I don't know that one. But guys, trust me, Sergio Perez, he's not going from podiums to all of a sudden he just doesn't have it and he's too tired or he just doesn't have it or he's battling under the pressure. That's total, complete and utter horse shit. Okay? I can tell you that now. And come here. If this was the end of the year, if this was the end of the year where it was the last round of the year and it was Verstappen Perez showdown, and there was a couple of points in it, and whoever wins, wins the championship, right? Now, if Sergio Perez bottled it right there and then, okay, I would say, yeah, all right, well, you know what, actually, maybe Perez actually did fuck this. Pressure got to him, it was, oh my god, da, 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 you know, he got nervous and he fucked it up. Now I'd be agreeing with people. But, to be honest, most of the people that are, not, are disagreeing with me are Verstappen fans. So, you know what, guys, if you want to fucking put your head in the sand grand i don't care whatever go ahead okay this is the reality i know racing i've been a racing driver i know these poli politics fucking scenarios they happen okay and don't get me wrong verstappen's a great driver and he's kicking ass so look hey you should be happy with that you should be very happy with that anyway so that's my couple of p on the red bull and perez now let's move on to hungary now we're gonna share we're gonna split the screen in a few moments guys now but 
Um, before we go to the uh, the actual track and the onboard with Hakkinen, I'm gonna show you the track now, okay? Now I'm gonna split the screen here, and let me see, I just wanna make sure I get the right one. And there we go, boom, okay. Now, you can see here's the track, guys. Now, I'm gonna go through this on the onboard, but I'm gonna call out a couple of things here. How, what, what, what's the key for the drivers this weekend? How are they gonna do it? Are they gonna carry the speed into the corner much? Is that what the key is? Is it actually going in slow and coming out fast? What is it, right? What is the key around here? What corners to look out for? Now, if you see here, me and guys, on the, on the, uh, uh, computer here now this is the track now you can see actually on the track it is a you can see it's a slow tight track I mean they do say it's like a, a karting track so going into turn one is not too bad it's just very simple break in a straight line down into second or third from eighth get on the power bang second turn two and three well tur two is okay it's important to carry the speed in here uh, because this car this corner does go on for quite a bit, so you just got to keep the speed up mid mid corner, especially there, because you do when you come out of turn two, you're full speed going into turn three, and you've got that long straight down. So you got to carry the speed down into turn four. So it's very important to carry the speed into two, keep the power up, and keep the corner grip levels up, and pull it out of turn three, up to turn four. Now turn four, pretty simple enough for the drivers. Turn five is okay. You need to get a good run out of turn five, have to say, even though it's only a short, a short, um, a short straight between or before number six. Um, but still, it's it's one of those. It looks like a short corner, but it does actually kind of just go on a little bit. It's quite quite interesting. Um, six and seven chicane, okay. We just make a good clean run in. Nothing too complicated about that. Now here's the key, I think, guys. If there's any driver that's going to make any time gap up here at, at Hungary, it's going to be these, this next sequence. Turn 8 into turn 9 and turn 11. Now 10 is okay, but 10 is, a bit, is basically a continuance of turn 9. Now what do I mean? Now this is all about transition direction change. Okay, because you see a turn one, they just come out of the right hander and they just straight up the car, grand. Turn two is okay because look, it's still a slow speed where you don't have to worry about car turn, uh, turn direction change and transition m much. Okay, but whereas you can see turn eight and nine and, and 10 and 11, right? You've got a, a left, a right, a left, a right, and you're carrying the speed into eight, okay? And you can see it here, turn eight, turn nine is right after it. So it's very important to carry the speed into eight, keep it, keep it, keep it into nine, keep it up, because then you're accelerating up to 10, keeping it up, and then just you possibly turn into turn 11, probably in sixth gear, um, one would assume with the downforce and the handling should be good. But if you don't get a good run into turn nine, all the way up to turn 11, you could actually lose a 10th or two. Now, a 10th or two, guys, is huge when it comes to motor racing. Doesn't sound much on the stopwatch, but believe you me, a tenth or two can be a fucking lifetime. That's why I was saying that McLaren have made good progression, but they still haven't made a massive progression because they're still two and a half tenths behind Max Verstappen in qualifying at Silverstone. Now, you might think that sounds, oh, yeah, well, you know, and in fairness, you know, if I never motor raced, I'd be thinking the same, I'd be like, well, oh, two and a half tenths is nothing, right? It's a fucking lifetime. So they still have a lot of work to do, McLaren, and anybody else. So if you can pick up an extra tenth even, even a tenth would be huge time going through eight because really, in many ways, turn eight all the way up to turn 11 and coming out of turn level is, you have to almost in, in a way treat it like one corner. You've got to carry the speed through eight, which keeps momentum into nine, momentum then into turn 11 and then down the back straight into turn 12 very very crucial and most importantly direction change here guys because if if the car is lagging a little bit on direction change as in into a left it's immediately then into a right you're gonna scrub off speed you're gonna be a little slower down into the next bend and then you've just fucked yourself for the next two or three corners so it's very very important for them to get that momentum carry the speed through keep the revs up keep the grip levels up 
down up to turn 12. So let's go on board with Mika Hackman. We're gonna go through one lap quick and I'll show you the racing line just very quickly because I don't want to interrupt it either. And we're gonna go from there. Now, here he goes, Hackman, he's just come out of turn one, okay? So let's just go back here. And here we go, right-hander. Now he's going in, he's gonna go into a left-hander, so I'll just call it quickly now, the racing line, guys, all right? So the racing line, slow in, fast out, and you wanna make a good run into a corner. Now this is gonna help for your karting, by the way, all right, especially if you're watching on YouTube here. That, like, if you ever challenge your friends, this is gonna help, okay? So if you're going into a left-hander, you start over on the right-hand side, Brake most of your speed, you're slowing down, down the gears in a straight line. Now Hakkinen's gonna carry the speed in because this, this track is about carrying the speed in, keeping the revs up in those long sweeping bends, okay? And then he's gonna cut into the apex, the middle of the corner, because that's the shortest way around the bend, and then let the car drift out all the way to the outside. Now that's basically the smoothest way through a bend. Any bend there is, if you can make a corner into a straight line as much as possible, that's the quickest way around because if you're going to a corner, you gotta slow down, right? And the car is scrubbing off speed. So the straighter the line is, or the straighter the wheel is, the straighter the line, and obviously you can get on the power. So slow in, fast out, but he's gonna be carrying the speed in. So let's just see him now go into a left-hander. He's over on the right, okay? He's coming in, he's coming in. Apex, bang. And he's in the apex here. Shortest way around the corner. Slow in, fast out. He's carrying the speed in as well, and now he's gonna plant the shoe, and he's gonna let the car drift out. Now, he doesn't let her drift out all the way because he's got a right-hander left, but let's, we'll see there now in a second. Now, he's got a right-hander, he's over on the left. Bang, apex. Middle of the bend, shortest way around the corner. Let's the car drift out, there you go. Now, let's follow him. Into the apex, bang. Over to the left. Apex. Boom. There we go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, Hackman. Fucking beautiful lap line. Over on the left. Kits in. The apex. Bang, bang. Beautifully taken out. Here we go. Here's the important part of the track. Okay? Very, very important. This is where you need to keep up the momentum, the speed. Here we go. He's keeping it up. He's keeping it up. This is his pole lap, by the way, guys. There we go. Lovely. Very nice. Now, do you see that, guys? I'm just going to go back one second here now. And we're going to show you that sequence now again, because this is crucial. Here we go. Okay, we're going to do it one more time. Into the chicane. Now, here he goes. He's needs, he needs to keep the speed up right up here now. Into the left. Apex, bang. Keep it smooth. Into the apex to the right. Keep it smooth. Let the car drift out. Perfect. That is beautifully done, absolutely. And he's gonna keep the shoe in, keep it in sixth gear, keep up the speed, bang. He's nailed it. Hopefully that helps for you, and especially for your karting, okay? Slow in, fast out, and believe me, if you keep to these principles, you'll kick all your friends' those ass at karting, okay? Trust me on that one. Because a lot of people make the mistake when you go karting that, uh, that you gotta go really fast into the bend, right? But all of a sudden you're scrubbing off a lot of speed coming out of the corner. So, slow in, fast out. Anyway, we're gonna be doing more of these. We're gonna be doing more onboards as we go throughout the season, so um, hopefully it'll, you know, it'll, it'll grow on you, it, it'll make more sense, if it's not making sense, I'm saying. Um, okay guys, so tech news, what do we have? Now, they're explaining here about the McLaren's updates and how they actually jumped, leaped, and bounded so much. Now, they're saying here, uh, there was a very significant change to the side pod floor and diffuser here. You can see that, I'll just highlight it there with the, the mouse. So, you see, the thing is, guys, it's still hard to know how good this is gonna be. Because obviously the side, po side pod floor and diffuser updates, obviously for aerodynamics, it worked a tremendous amount. There's more airflow coming through, that's what they're trying to explain here. But you see, the thing is, is that it doesn't mean, it's like, like they could do a, let's say a quote, logical upgrade to help a car for going faster on the straight. But all of a sudden you, you get out of a wind tunnel where they try and do all these tests, you put it on a track and all of a sudden the fucking thing goes slower. So it doesn't mean that it's gonna work. 
You know, I mean, imagine your iPhone, right? Your your Android. They come up with this brilliant new upgrade or update, but the moment it goes on your phone, your your phone goes completely kaput, right? I mean, it genuinely happens. Now, for them, thankfully for this time, it worked. All right. Problem is, guys, I wouldn't be like I was saying. I wouldn't read into this too much because we have to see what they're going to be like at the slower speed tracks. I mean, you've got uh, Singapore, you've got Hungary this weekend. Um, Oh, to name but a few, right? There's going to be a lot of places where they're going to be put to the test. So let's not start getting carried away here now with, uh, you know, with them doing so well right now. We're going to have to see. Um, but it's going to be really interesting and it's going to be fun to see at Har Hungar Ring because it is totally like a totally different track than Silverstone. So for them, the good news is even if they do struggle for them, it's going to it's going to be good for them because they're going to find out now quick if they're if they're any good or not. So, yeah. Okay. Here comes the moment. Oh Jesus. Prediction time. <laughs> I'm getting about half of them right if I'm best, if I'm lucky. Even though it is great though, isn't it? I mean, you just can't predict which is what's going to happen. So, it is fantastic though. Keeps it interesting. Oh, okay. If I'm Verstappen this weekend, well, yeah, we'll, we'll go with if I'm the driver first. If I'm Verstappen this weekend, I'm pretty much just arriving up and doing exactly what I do normally. Get it on pole, get a good start off the line, probably go for a one-stop strategy this time um, because I know people are going to try, pro, I, what I'm thinking of, excuse me, people are going to try and go on the soft tires, gain an advantage over me to then get a longer run. Now, they might have a disadvantage going into the pit lane twice instead of once but I think that's the way to beat Verstappen you gotta go on softs or you really go for a real long run on one stop and but you gotta make sure you, you are just perfectly timed coming in and out so Verstappen stick it on pole get a good start stay on medium or fuck it I'd even go on hard tires but again depending on how their car is gonna be um, but I would be looking to go for the hard tires first and then stick to the red, uh, stick to soft tires afterwards. One stop, in, out, bank, done, win the race. Perez, well, he's just got to go all balls out to the wall here. I mean, come here. He's got to go for here now. Like, there's no fucking around. If they give him the car, of course. If they give him the car. No more mistakes by him. Has the car underneath him if they give it to him. And bang. He had just, he, he's got to stick it on pole. If I'm Perez, I've got to stick it on pole this weekend. Stick it to my teammate. Hey, buddy, I'm still here in the race. You're not getting away that fucking easy. Okay? And you've got to make a good start. <sighs> I mean, the problem is, with his pit stop strategy, the team have this, will, will know what Verstappen's going to be on versus Perez. So, you know, there's going to be no secrets here. Now, what does he do? I think you're probably going to do the same thing. You're going to go for a long run, keep him behind. The good thing about Hungara Ring is that because it's like a karting track, there could be a chance that no one's going to overtake you. You know, okay, there's the long straight at the end of the straight, but it's easy to block people in Hungara Ring. It's very easy. So, you know, he's got to get it into the... He's got to be first into that first corner on Sunday. He really does. Um, McLaren, well, I can't predict McLaren. Because, again, we'll just have to see with their updates this weekend. Is it going to work versus Silverstone? Um, and hopefully for them it does. Alonso, well, oof. Alonso, mm, he definitely does have a chance. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys, excuse me. He's got a chance. Can he do anything? Well, we're going to have to see. He had a good chance at, at Monaco, but they didn't, they didn't maximize their, their advantage. Uh, but again, he doesn't have a huge advantage anyway. He doesn't have a huge advantage over Red Bull. He's still struggling against Red Bull. So, hopefully. If, if Alonso could get on the podium this weekend, I'd be fucking happy. Ferrari? Jesus Christ, I don't know what to say about these guys. What's going on with Ferrari? You know what? I genuinely can't predict what Ferrari's going to do this weekend. I, I, honestly, I cannot predict. I'm not even going to put them in my top three. Genuinely, I'm not going to put them in my top three. I can't predict what's going to happen. What's going on with them? I was shocked, shocked to see what happened at Silverstone. Ninth and 10th? Are you kidding me? You're fucking Ferrari, man. What's going on? Jesus. Well, anyway, 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 anyway. Okay, okay, okay. 
All right, look. Let's just go to the predictions. I'm going to go with Verstappen. I'm going to go Perez second. So Verstappen for the win. Perez second. Ooh. You know, I'm going to go... We haven't even really mentioned Russell and Hamilton, but... Uh, I mean, they finished second and third last year, didn't they? As far as I remember. Uh, let's see. Uh, can't remember what it is now, but anyway. Um, I'm going to go... You know, I'm going to go Alonso. I'm going to go Verstappen for the win. Perez second. Alonso third. Alonso, I think he's got a good balance in the car. I think he'll be back on track to a degree, but he still won't have an edge over Red Bull. Unless they come out with some surprise update for us, hopefully. And um, But I just can't see them overtaking Red Bull. Perez, I think they'll give him the equipment this weekend. Why not? They've got a nice lead over Constructors' Championship. Verstappen's kicking ass. <laughs> Why not? You know? Um, yeah. I think Verstappen will dominate as normal this year. Perez, second. And Alonso, third. Now, let's talk about, before we go, before we wrap this up. Daniel Ricciardo, huge hype over Ricciardo back in Formula 1. Yeah, it's great for him. There's no doubt about it. It is fantastic. He's out of the jail of being a test driver. Now, I don't know, guys. Many of you may or may not know. Okay, so bear with me. But a test, but for those who don't know, he's be, he was, before he signed up again with Alpha Tauri, Ricciardo was the Red Bull test driver. Okay, he was the guy in on the sideline. All right, reserve driver, test driver, whatever you want to call it. So, his job was to go to every Grand Prix with Red Bull. He's been at every Grand Prix this year. But the thing is, he'd have to go training. He'd have to prepare, get good sleep. And his job was to basically just sit around for the weekend. And if, God forbid, touch wood, you know, the drivers, hopefully they don't have any big accidents. If something happened to any of their drivers, he'd, ha he'd jump in. So he's the reserve guy just waiting, sitting on the side of him. Like a, like a substitute player. Except... The sub does come on a lot more than a reserve driver for Formula 1. Um, and, you know, look, touch what it's done, like I said. That's a good thing because, look, God, God forbid, we don't want any Formula 1 driver having any accidents, you know. So, he's now out of that jail. He's now actually fucking racing for the rest of the year for Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri is Red Bull's sister company. And really, guys, the real boss of Red Bull is not the guy, the CEO, the main guy... Ugh, Sorry, now my my his name slipped out of my mind. He's not the real boss. Yes, he's the quote boss at the weekends. He ain't the real boss. Christian Horner's the real boss because only a few years ago, you'll see it on Netflix. And I know some people are like, oh, I can't believe you're talking about Netflix. Yeah, right. You're so full of shit, man. I can't believe you're believing that. Actually, guys, of course I don't. I don't fucking believe Netflix fully, but I do know racing. And believe you me, a lot of the Netflix Drive to Survive program is based on real stuff and even the conversations people have had in the back you see it are actually things that do happen in real life and racing so whatever guys go away from me <laughs> you don't have a clue what you're talking about now yes they do absolutely no question hype things and you know add this scene in here and absolutely right no question but a lot of their stuff i've seen i'm like oh my god that brings me right back to racing it really does so um what was my point? Um, oh yeah, so Red Bull. They took out Gasly out of Red Bull midway through the season. Now, guys, that's normally unheard of, where a driver is pulled from a team mid mid season. And I can tell you this, they certainly don't go to another team, right? Like Christian Horner. Can you imagine Christian Horner calling Ferrari or Mercedes and saying, Hey guys, listen, do you know what? We want to get rid of Gasly there. Um, do you want to take him? Mercedes or Ferrari would go, is he out of his fucking mind? We've got our own drivers. What's wrong with you? Jesus, man. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> like, they'd almost be laughing at him going, he, he, he's lost his mind. Okay? I'm telling Like, really? And Christian Horner wouldn't be able to do it. He wouldn't have any power over say over another team. But it just goes to show that he does have say over Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri. Keep the pronouncing wrong. So, so, in other words, guys, yeah. Christian Horner has the power to put him in. So, the point is here. Christian Horner has the power to put Ricardo into Red Bull. Believe you me, this isn't Alpha Tauri calling this. This is Christian Horner calling this. Okay? They're not happy with DeVries. They put Ricardo in instead. Now, here's the thing. 
Why, if they're not happy with Sergio Perez, and if it is really true that Perez is buckling under the pressure? Well, if that's the case, why not just re replace Perez? They've done it before with Perez. Uh, sorry, with per uh, Pierre Gasly. They replaced Gasly mid-season, so why not just replace Perez? Do what you've done before. And Perez is better, uh, sorry, Ricardo's got better stats at Red Bull. So, I don't know guys, many, may, some of you may or may not know that Ricardo actually did race with Red Bull. If you compare Ricardo's stats at Red Bull to Sergio Perez's at Red Bull up to now, Ricardo's coming out ahead. He's got more wins, he's got more podiums, he's actually done better than Sergio Perez. So hey, why not put Ricardo back into Red Bull? Now, don't you think? Think about that. Christian Horner can move anybody he wants, anytime he wants. And he didn't. He didn't move Perez. And Ricardo's got better stats. So why not put Ricardo back? Maybe there's more sponsorship opportunities going on with Perez than Ricardo. Because that's exactly what I'm thinking. Now I understand for Ricardo, he's out of the prison jail, uh, the prison, so to speak, of of being the reserve driver, right? And he's going to be on a high for two or three rounds. He's going to be he's going to be delighted, and I don't blame him. However, he ain't going to be happy because I'm one would assume that Daniel Ricardo likes to win, likes to win races and win championships, right? He won't be happy with sitting in an Alfa Tauri car. Who he, he's going to be midfield at best right are at the at the back of the grid he's not gonna be happy he's gonna get frustrated i would assume one would assume this because he want to win he's competitive then again we'll see if he sits around and he's all happy and delighted for the rest of the year well then i'd be thinking fucking two think twice about him i, t I really would because why are you happy dude, dude now i do think he's come back in the hopes that red bull will take him back now i understand that I really do. And hey, if I was in that position, I would be hoping that too. God damn, of course, of course I'd be right. Of course I would be thinking that. However, we gotta keep this real here though. We gotta keep it real, people. I don't think he's gonna go be going back to Red Bull because if they wanted him back, they would have had him back already. And <sighs> he's gotta bring something to the table. Perez is bringing some sponsorship money to the table. Okay, he is. He's bringing money to fund the team to keep going. Now, is he getting paid? I presume he is. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you never know, guys, what's behind closed doors. You never know what's under wraps. He probably is getting paid, but he's also getting a sponsor to pay the team as well to keep in the in the in Formula One. I mean, Mazepin was doing it at Haas. Mick Schumacher was doing it at Haas. Hey, Michael Schumacher, when he came into Formula One. He paid his way. Maybe not a, many of you know this, but this happens very, very, uh, very often. This is nothing new to Formula One, you know, because, hey, and I understand from Formula One teams, they got to keep going. They got to keep the lights on. They got to keep the cars on the fucking track. They got to do what they need to do to keep the fucking the party going here. So if, it, if a driver comes along with money, well, hey, shit, you got to have to, you got to think about it, right? You're certainly going to fucking review it. No two ways about it. You're going to talk to your shareholders. You can talk to whoever you need to. And you're going to really think about it hard. So if Ricardo brings sponsorship money to the table, I think, I think he'd definitely be an open nominee for that next seat in Red Bull. But I think Perez is bringing enough. So I don't think it's looking good. For Ricardo, I really don't. I think if he was going to be at Red Bull, he'd still be there. You know, or they would have him back on the on the list again. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. So anyway, guys, that was um, F1 talk for today. So it's going to be an interesting weekend, I think. Hopefully, it's going to be a very interesting weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Are you? I hope you are. So guys, listen, we'll be back on Monday morning with a the reaction from Hungara Ring. Can't wait. Buckle yourselves in, guys. It's going to be interesting. Ta-ra! Peter. Wow. 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 Wow.